Yay. Hey everyone, it's me, Jennifer James. So excited to be here with you today, bringing Amber, the West Coast medium, in a rare guest appearance. She's actually booked months in advance. So we're super, super grateful that she's here today and she's gonna share a bit of her story and even answer some live questions. So what we're actually gonna do before we get going is we're gonna share this link and broadcast it in a couple different places. So if you're watching the replay of this, you may want to uh, fast forward the next minute or two because we're going to go ahead and do this and share this so as many people as possible can be a part of it. So I'm going to go into, uh, I'll get you the link here, Amber. I don't know. Nothing shows up for me other than you. So I don't know that I can do anything. I don't have any options. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll I think we've got to take the link from my page. Oh, we've got a lot of people joining us. Yay. Okay. Here we go. Um, so if you go if you go into the Facebook group, Amber. Yeah. Can you see it in there? Hang on. Let me just see. I have my phone <laughs> and with a light on that's that's my fancy setup because <laughs> it's so dark in my house um no okay uh is it no yeah it might not be possible Oh, but I can see us in yours. Yeah, and does it give you the option to share that? Um, let's see. Share. Oh, but I can see us oh, in yours. Geez, sorry. Yeah, and does it give you the option to share that? <laughs> okay, so copy link. And then I think I can go into mine. Oh, I might be able to do it. Hang on, here I go. I am so not tech savvy. I can talk to all the dead people in the world. <laughs> Can't work an iPad for the life of me. Oh, I did it too. There we go. Yeah. Okay, I think I did it. Let's Yay! See. Oh, no. It says, oops, something went wrong. So maybe I can't. Darn. Okay, oh. we'll figure it out. That's okay. Oh, yeah, that's okay. We'll live. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, no, it doesn't like it. Weird. Oh, and well. so where did you get the link from? Just from you, from your, um, the Savvy Soul Sisters page. Right here. Uh, maybe I can, nope. Uh, invite friends. Oh, yeah. Well. Oh. Yeah, otherwise I have to invite each individual person and I can't, that would take forever. Okay. Um, hmm. I wish I could share this. Do you see share under the video at all? Yeah, it says share and then copy link, but it won't post it on my page for some share. reason. We're probably annoying everybody. That's okay. <laughs> they can I can try and do it after and put, copy a link and they can watch it afterwards. Okay. Publish. Yeah. Yeah, I can. The one thing I can do is invite everybody separately. Um, but I think that would take a really, really, really long time. But that's okay. Okay. So let's just get started. Darn it. Okay. Well, hopefully everyone that's meant to be here will be here. Yes. So Amber, I did, I, I'll share a minute or two for everyone watching how we met. So yeah. I was um, in San Diego and I was meditating and uh, I've shared this with, with Amber before. And 
And one of the things that came up while I was meditating was this word teacher, 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 teacher. And it was really coming through strong. And then as I was finishing that meditation, I went onto Facebook. I had a message from a really good friend of mine. And she's like, oh, my gosh, have you heard of the West Coast Medium? She's amazing. I've been watching her videos. I think you'd really love her. So I, I typed in West Coast Medium into Facebook. And this, this, map, oh, this map popped up. And I thought, why is this showing me a map? First of all, because I was I thought I had clicked on your page and it showed yeah. me a map. And then I'm like, why is it showing me a map of my house? And I was looking in on the dot. I'm like, this is so weird. Why am I seeing this map of my house? And then I realized that it wasn't my house. It was your house, Amber. And I we live like, I don't know, 100 feet Two, apart. Yeah, not even. We're like backyard <laughs> neighbors almost. Yeah, it was the most bizarre thing ever of all the places, of all the, you know, houses and neighborhoods and streets. Uh, we live, you know, not even 100 feet from each other, 100 yards. So yeah. I thought that was really cool. I felt compelled to message Amber and reach out. I don't normally do that. And I assume she probably had hundreds of messages anyway, so I wasn't really expecting a response. But I reached out to Amber and and uh, we connected and we've been on some coffee dates and I've been to her live event, which was really incredible. And we'll share more about an upcoming live event later as well, if you can attend. And uh, we've just really clicked. And I mentioned to Amber, I said, you know what? I think the women in my Savvy Soul Sister group would absolutely love to hear what you're all about, what you're able to do, what you share, the message that you have. If it ever you know, came on your heart to be a part of the group, we'd love to have you. And here she is. So I'm just feeling super, super grateful because Amber is literally booked months in advance for readings. She's done live Ooh. events. She's done one. She's doing some more. They sell out super fast. So this is a really rare and special opportunity. Thank you so much for being my here, pleasure. Amber. I'm excited. This is my Yay. first time doing like a not in the same place interview. So it's interesting yeah. for me for sure. Cool. Yeah. So um, I thought, you know, it might be interesting. We are going to hop into some Q&A. We're going to do some live question and answer, which I'm so excited about. Um, but I wondered if you would share for the ladies who haven't had a chance to get to know you or follow you yet. So lots of them have from the group. Um, but if they haven't, would you mind sharing a little bit about you yourself and, and how you came to have these gifts? Sure, I can explain first, just in case people don't know who I am, kind of what my gifts are. Yeah. Um, so I'm a medium, which means to me that I can connect with people who have crossed over. Uh, I'm an empath, but times a million. There's a lot of people that are empaths in this world, but I'm like an empath. <laughs> if I, if you, sorry, if you notice me looking off to the side, I let my guide stand there and they'll help out answering all the questions. It's not just me that answers them. Uh, but um, so that means I can see, feel, hear, and sense things other people can't. I can also feel everything from everybody who's alive um, and dead. Uh, I am also spiritually intuitive or what others would say is psychic because there's no sense of time or space on the other side. Spirit can provide guidance for the future, show me memories of the past, if it's going to help somebody or validate something. I'm also a medical intuitive or a healer and a healer, but I am a little more cautious with that. And the healing I mostly do on my family and friends. Um, although I do practice and I do in videos as well, I call it mood control because I don't know what else to call it. Um, when people are around me or listening to me, I can kind of breathe in any anxiety or nerves or any feelings they might have and let it go. So usually people who are around me feel very peaceful. Uh, not, it's not me, it's spirit, but they do feel very peaceful. Um, and as far as, you know, how I came to be this way, I was born this way. I was my earliest memory. I think I was four, um, and it wasn't fun at all. Like, I, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. It wasn't fun. It was more scary than fun when I was young. I didn't accept all my gifts until about a year and a half ago. And since then, it's just gone crazy, like just crazy. It's amazing how many people uh, have responded and just the opportunities that have been presented to me. And so, yeah, that's where I'm so, from. So, Amber, are you open to sharing a little bit about how, like you said, you accepted your gifts about a year and a half ago? Yeah. Are you open to sharing, you know, what that experience was like or how that sure. happened? Yeah. Yeah. So um, normally it was always just me that saw things, felt things, heard things. Um, half the time I thought I was a nutcase, so I didn't tell anybody. Sometimes I was like, oh, okay, like it makes sense because I would know stuff about people without them having to tell me. But in this instance, it was my husband and I were in bed. It was morning. He was getting up for work. It was pitch black. 
And from beside me, a little kid, like a toddler, maybe a three-year-old, um, made a noise, like a pouting noise. And my husband grabbed his phone and turned the flashlight on and was like, Wyatt, go back to bed. He thought it was our son. Our son was much older than that. He's eight now. And when he did that, I was like, you heard that? Like, you heard that? And he's like, yeah, I heard that. What was that? And he's like looking under the bed with his flashlight going like, what the heck was that? And for some reason, somebody else hearing it and vouching for me that I wasn't crazy. Uh, that was the first spirit I channeled. It happened to be a cousin of mine's daughter who I had never met. But the day that that happened was the day she had gotten sick and uh, was moved to like a children's hospital before passing away a few weeks later. And uh, she needed a message delivered to her parents and him hearing it and being like, OK, no, definitely. I heard that, too. You're not crazy. And as soon as I kind of accepted my gift, the first one, the mediumship, everything just kind of spiraled. Not spiraled in a bad way, spiraled in a good way. But I think, um, at least with that instance, I was able to see how much it helped that person, even though I really didn't want to do it. Like, I was so uncomfortable. I didn't want to phone up this cousin who I have not talked to in years. And then she also, the little girl, made me phone her mom, who I'd never met or talked to. Um, but they didn't think I was crazy, thank goodness. Um, and it just provided them so much peace. Mm. Growing up, I knew there was something about me, something different, I didn't know how to have a back and forth conversation. So I knew I could see them, I could hear them, but I didn't know how to like get a, an answer to a question or something like that. And all I needed to do was just ask and it happened. Uh, so the mediumship turned on first. Um, my empath abilities have always been there, but are way stronger now. There's something called the Claire's, clairvoyance, clairsentient, all those. I have every single one. There's not one that I don't have. Uh, so those slowly turned on. The hardest one for me was the psychic uh, because I'm a Christian, I would still call myself a Christian and churches just really frown on that. So for me, that part was really hard. But once I realized, it's not like I am have a crystal ball and I'm telling you in six months, this is going to happen in a year. It's more by be seeing the past, I can understand where a person's come from. And by seeing the options for their future, spirit can help me to say what needs to be said for them to be on the best path for their soul. So it's not that I'm like pulling things out of thin air and like spoiling or telling people when they're going to die or something like that. I did do that once. It was not a good idea. So now I don't say stuff like that. Mm. Um, but it was just kind of, yeah, learning what should be said, what shouldn't, how much of what should be said. Wow. So you touched on um, highest path yeah. a second ago yeah. Can you explain a little bit about, because I've also heard you say that we're never really on a wrong path. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the women that we've attracted into this group are women who, um, where they are on the spectrum kind of varies from, you know, maybe they're in a job that they find very depleting and draining and they don't feel that they are in alignment with what they're, what they could be doing with their life. They don't really yeah. maybe feel fulfilled. Maybe they feel like there's, something missing or they're supposed to be doing something else, but they can't put their finger on it. Um, then there's women who have, you know, been through that phase. They feel like they have found some clarity or they've moved forward in a direction that feels good, but maybe they're just wondering, you know, are they on the right path or how can they get even on a higher path? So when you say we're never really on the wrong path, but then you say there is a higher path, yeah. can you explain a little bit of the difference and how can you, how could someone watching um, is there a way that they can tell if they're on their highest path or, or not? Sure. So when I see somebody's future, I see like a, an array of choices, usually like three to five for any given decision you have to make. So say let's focus specifically on career. So I'll see the very hardest, the most difficult. You're really struggling. It's so hard all the way up to this is great. I'm following exactly what I need to be doing and I feel great. And I'll see all the options. Yes, normally I know which one you're going to take or the most likely, but your mind could change tomorrow. You could get motivated and want to change something and that path will change. So all of those were planned out. None of them are the wrong path. They're just different levels of learning. So you're learning very different things by staying stuck in a rut and just doing stuff out of obligation than you are learning when you are completely feeling like you're following your purpose. So even though they're different, easier, harder, um, not even easier, harder, just different energetically to me. When somebody comes to me, I can feel their energy around what they're doing in their day-to-day -day life and how they feel about that. But it's always changeable. Like it's never a permanent thing like, okay, 
this is the life I have. This is the job I have. I have to do it because I need money. And that's what life is, right? You don't just get to do what you want to make yourself happy. And that's the way most humans believe society works. But it's actually completely not true. You can choose tomorrow to go, you know what? Like, this is not what I want to be doing. And this is awful. And I feel gross inside when I get home at the end of the day. I have no energy for my family or for my friends because I feel so off. I'm going to change that. So I will see all of those. I can try or spirit can try and direct you in the best way that's going to get you to the easiest path. It's not always meant to be. You're not always meant to learn those lessons in this life, but it's always your choice. And I think us as a society feel like so obligated to certain things. It's like you're obligated to overworking. You're obligated. The more you do, the more you're rewarded. If you work really hard and you're an 80 hour a week person and, you, you know, I work at the very most eight hours a week and I am completely fulfilled in what I do. Of course, there's extras to that. There's meditation and planning. That's all part of my job, planning live events and stuff like that. And I feel fully fulfilled and fully rewarded just as much as somebody who works 80 hours a week. Maybe they're more rich than me, but maybe not too. You never know. But I think so many people go, well, this is what I have to do because this is what I'm obligated to do. Spirit completely disagrees. You can do what exactly what you want to do and be as fulfilled as you want. We just really get stuck in a world that tells us this is how the world works and this is how you function. Sorry, I think that's my computer. <laughs> Um, I have no idea if I answered the question, Spirit. Just you did. <laughs> Honestly, Amber, I think you answered it even better than I would have <laughs> hoped because you you started talking about how you work eight hours a week and you yeah. feel completely fulfilled and yeah. you don't have to work 80 hours a week and be totally obsessed with your purpose or your path or your gifts in order to feel fulfilled or in order yeah. to feel like you're doing what you're meant to be doing. It doesn't have to be your sole focus all the time, hard work, grind, obsessive. I feel well, like I, that has been something that has been very ingrained in our society. Yeah. Um, and I have definitely been in that place. I've definitely been the one who is um, overworking and, and making almost like I'm making it hard because I feel like that's what I felt like. That's what it was supposed to be like. Yeah. You work hard. You work lots of hours. That's how you get successful. That's And when you're successful, you're happy and so on and so on. And, and I fell into that trap and man, it was not fun. It was completely depleting and, yeah. and uh, it took me further away from joy and fun and fulfillment, which were the exact reasons I wanted to start a business and follow something other than my uh, finance job before. So thank well, you so I much for touching that, on um, The other thing I don't have is guilt about it. I don't mm -hmm. feel guilty at all that this is what I do just like when I was just a stay-at-home mom I wasn't just a stay-at-home mom I don't like that word but when I was a stay-at-home mom I did not feel guilty I didn't feel guilty when people were like well you know you know you wouldn't be so broke if you were at work like blah, on and on and on and I don't feel guilty about working eight hours a week I get a, I get if I had accepted every reading request I've had since February I would have a four-year wait list I can't live like that I can't plan my life that far in advance in order to make other people happy. So it's kind of a lottery right now if you get a reading with me. And I can't feel guilty about that because this is all I can do in this moment. Mm -hmm. I have so many people that, well, you know, you wouldn't have to charge so much if you could work more. Like, why don't you do 10 or 12 readings a week? Because your readings will suck because I'll be tired <laughs> and I will start to resent what I do. Right now, I love it. So I think it's a lot of us have to work on the guilt around mm. I think that can go across the board, too, because I also don't feel guilty about who I am if I'm not your cup of tea, if you don't want me on your Facebook or your whatever, and it's not something that speaks to you, that's totally fine. And I think in a world where we really right now are revolved around technology, when we promote ourselves, even me, most of it's online, it's very rarely like an in-person thing or on TV or on, I don't even know, the radio, um, we can feel a little bit of guilt, you know, like I feel fine posting on my business page, but then... When I go to post on my personal page, I'm like, oh, do all my like family want to see this, you know? Um, and I that I was like that in the beginning. And now I'm like, well, this is me. If you don't like it, then too bad. <laughs> Amber, you know? that's really huge. Would you mind sharing? Because honestly, oh, I speak to a lot of women who they do have fear around stepping from who they thought they were supposed to be and yeah. following the trail that their parents, you know, would be acceptable to their parents and to society, you know, getting the degree, getting the 
career and so on and so on. And now, you know, working with me or, you know, someone like you and really getting in tune with what they would like to be doing, what they would love to be doing, what they feel in alignment with. But when it comes to expressing that to the world, suddenly it's so common. It's just like the brakes are put down yeah. and, and there's fear and there's worry and, and guilt like you talk about. And I'm curious, do you, are you aware of how you were able to shift that? Um, I think for, well, I'm lucky in the way that I have spirit. So I feel a hundred percent comfortable in what I'm doing and I can feel that. I think a lot of people don't have that or don't feel it. Um, but I think it just comes with accepting kind of who you are and why you are the way you are and that you have a purpose here and that your purpose might not fit with other people's, but it doesn't mean it's wrong or bad or anything. I have, you know, I went to school, I'm a social worker I'm not doing it now. I just finished paying off my student loan so that I can do this now, which I don't <laughs> need schooling for. Um, but I think, you know, everybody has a choice. Everybody has a choice to see what they want to see, to unfollow something, that kind of thing. So you just have to realize that if somebody is seeing something you've put out there, it's because they're meant to see it. If they don't want to see it, there's very easy ways of not seeing that. Um, but for me, you know, I carried a lot of guilt until I actually accepted who I was. Mm -hmm. If you're not accepting who you are and what your purpose is, like, obviously, I was born into this world with a giant purpose, more so than probably, I don't even know how many people, a lot of people in the world. Um, and to completely deny that and not follow it for me led to a ton of guilt now that I'm comfortable with it. And, you know, it doesn't mean sometimes when people are mean, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Or when people say, why are you posting this? Like, this is so dumb you know, I'm still human and it'll hurt my feelings sometimes, but I can't feel guilty about mm -hmm. doing what I need to do. Do people that go into an office 80 hours a week feel guilty because they're working themselves to the bone, giving themselves an ulcer? Probably not. So I just work wow. on feeling comfortable with it. Can you tell me a little bit more about purpose? It's something that I, I love to share about. I love to talk about. I never used, um, I definitely didn't use it at all when I was in finance. Um, when I did destination wedding photography, I still didn't use it. I just felt like I was following my passion. I, yeah. the, the word purpose never really came up for me, but I felt like I was following my passion. I was following my heart. Um, when I started doing the work that I do now, I thought, oh, my gosh, is this what purpose is? Is this what it feels like to be doing something that it feels like this is the reason you were born? And I had never yeah. felt that before. And can you expand a little bit about purpose, like the, the bigger picture of purpose. Is there, is there a way to not be living your purpose or is it just living it on different scales? It's definitely living it on different levels. All of us, there's kind of like eight or nine main themes that we continue to be born into the world to achieve. Uh, and each life we kind of focus on one or two of them. Uh, so no matter what you're doing, you're fulfilling that purpose, literally, no matter what you're doing, it's what levels and how comfortable you feel with it, completely denying yourself, or denying who you are fulfills a purpose, it might not be the most fun, but it does fulfill a purpose in this life, you definitely know when you're at kind of the highest level that you can reach for fulfilling your purpose, because you feel content in life, and you don't feel like like you left the stove on all the time, or like you're missing something all the time, you feel like you are where you're supposed to be. For me, I never felt like I fit. I don't know how else to explain it, but I didn't feel like in whatever I was doing that I exactly fit there, whether it was a job or a group of friends or anything like that. I now 100% feel I fit in this world. And I know why I'm here. I know what I'm here for. I know what I'm supposed to do. Sometimes I still don't listen and don't do it. You know, spirit likes to take me out of my comfort zone a lot. So, you know, I still have a choice of what levels of which things I do. But I think everybody has a passion or knows kind of where they would like to go. But in a fear based society and in a reward punishment based society, it's very hard to just take the first steps to go there. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I don't even know how many hundreds because I do these live videos, literally hundreds of questions per video am I on the right path? I want to change my career. Is it the right thing? Every single person, my answer is you're on the right path. But if you want to change your career, then do it. It will take you on a better path. Probably sometimes it'll take you on a harder path. But then you're still learning. Um, 
but I think, I don't know. I just think we're really told to conform into this box that exists mm -hmm. within society. And those of us that don't fit in this box or don't want to be in the box or find it too cramped in there, it's kind of like, well, why would you do that? Like, you know, you have stability. Like when I left um, VHA or Island Health, which is a great, not a great union, it's an okay union, but I had benefits, you know, I had a pension, all of these things. But it wasn't great. It wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. It was 12 hour shifts, you know, at, at times I was working almost 70 hours a week. This is so different than that. Obviously, I needed to be able to accept I'm a bit of a different case because I was born with the gifts I needed. Everybody's born with the gifts they need. Some need to learn about them or grow them. I as soon as I turned it on, it was just there. Um, but a lot of the guilt that humans carry with them prevent us from doing things. A hundred percent prevent us from doing things, whether it's guilt towards our husband, because we want to make a different choice or our wife, our spouse, our partner, guilt towards our family or our parents, because they paid for this huge education. And now maybe we're not going to use it. Guilt towards our kids, because don't we want to be able to afford to put them in like my daughter who dances, which is thousands of dollars a year. And usually in that transition phase, when you go from doing one thing, like using me as an example, although I know I'm kind of an exception to a lot of the rules, going from my full time job to doing this, when I started, I could only do three hours a week. And that is not enough <laughs> to really do anything with it. I would charge a lot less money because I was brand new to it. And it taken me you know this long a year and a half to get to where i am now and still my husband still works full time um you know three weeks at a time but we'll get there but i have mm -hmm. no guilt about it yeah because it's wow. what we need to do <laughs> and i wonder if that's kind of one of the reasons we we come into human form is so that we can experience guilt and different things that aren't on yeah. the other side and learn how to overcome them learn how to be on our highest path or become our highest selves in spite yeah. of having guilt, fear, expectations. Um, well, and when you choose a lesson on the other side, so say that the main lesson you're learning in this life is patience. Mm. Wouldn't it be nice if then we came into this life and we were like, oh, I'm just going to be so patient. I'm going to be the most patient person ever. I'm born patient. I'm going to be patient all my life. That's not how it works. Usually you are born the most impatient person that can exist. And then you are presented with hundreds of thousands of opportunities to practice patience. And finally, you get to the point where it's like, you know, being impatient isn't really helping me so much. So maybe I should try on this patience thing. It's not when you're learning something, when you've chosen to learn it, same with caregiving. If you've chosen to le learn caregiving, you're not going to be born a caregiver, you know, that wow. gives everything to everyone. You're going to be born and then you're going to have people in your life who need care. So maybe somebody's going to have an accident that leaves them incapacitated and you're going to have to care for them. Maybe your parents are going to need to live with you at some point. Maybe you're going to be born with a child with disabilities so you can learn what it truly means to care for somebody without needing anything in return. You're not just born caregiving because then wow. what have you learned? You haven't learned anything. You learned it on the other side. Yeah. You have to be presented with those opportunities here. So Whoa. you just kind of got to figure out what the lessons are. And sometimes that's really, really hard. Sometimes yeah. we don't know, or we feel like, I know there's got to be a lesson here somewhere, but man, it's so frustrating. Like you feel like you're kind of on a hamster wheel. Um, you just have to identify what those lessons are. I want to, there's two th more things coming up. I know people are wanting probably to ask questions. Um, two more things. One is when you're talking about, you know, you're always you're always on the right path. It's just you're on different levels of easy or hard. Yeah. And and having a purpose and you're living it, you know, um, you know, in, in a really strong alignment or maybe not a strong alignment. Um, how can I connect these two dots? So if if I'm living really like really firmly in alignment with my purpose and how you were describing about feeling like, Oh, this is where I belong. This is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. This feels really good. Is that then your easiest path? Yes. Probably. Okay. Sometimes there can be one higher. I think a good judge as a human is when you lay your head down at night, do you go, Oh my gosh, that was such a great day. And even the things that happened that weren't great, I am so grateful for because I feel like I learned a lot. Or do you lay your head down and go, man, I really missed the point today. I can't believe I did that. I didn't make time for this. And now I got to do it tomorrow. And you know, my list is getting bigger and bigger and I'm just not accomplishing it. And oh my gosh, did I leave the stove on? That's a good 
indication that you're probably on one of the harder paths for your soul. You just have to get to that point. And even when you don't feel like it, when you lay your head down at night, if you're having all those thoughts in the dwelling and, oh my gosh, the what ifs, and I, I didn't do enough, I should have done more, start listing off 10 things you're grateful for. Because that will shift mm-hmm. your perspective and help you to understand that, you know what, even if you are on a bit of a harder path, you haven't quite figured it out and you're still stumbling a little bit, you should still have so much gratitude because you're learning as you go. Right. Um, I think we look at stuff and we go, you know, I'm failing. Like I'm failing because I don't think I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now or I don't have the option to do exactly what I want to do right now. So I'm failing. That is not it at all. Mm. It's just that you're getting to the – it's like – taking a bunch of quizzes before you take your final test, you're getting to the point where you're ready to do the thing that you're supposed to do. They're just not quite there yet. Like a lot of us want to run before we can walk. You got to walk first. Totally. (laughs) So if if you then, and I want to, I just want to reconcile this. If you're on your, say your highest path where you're just feeling great when your head hits the pillow at night and you're content and you're happy and you're feeling fulfilled and joy and, um, is, and say, if that means that's your easiest path, then are you doing as much learning and growing as if you were on your hardest path? I think you are, because you're also having to teach yourself how not to kind of float away with it, okay. to keep humble and stay grounded and all of those things that come with kind of the euphoria of figuring it out a little bit. So you're learning, you're just learning different things. And you know what, if you're not learning, your guides are going to throw stuff at you to learn. So they'll take you down a couple notches and go, you know what, like, no, no, you, you're kind of on the right track, but you just need to slow down or you need to add something into it. So maybe you're going to like how we met, you're going to pull somebody else in to to keep on a path of learning. So they're going to keep throwing lessons at you. It's very, very rare that a human gets to the point where they have learned everything they're supposed to learn while they're here. Usually it happens when you're older. And most of the time you'll go either, okay, I'm done. I can go to the other side now and you'll take an exit point or you'll go, okay, I can just relax and be peaceful. And at that point, you're not striving for a higher purpose anymore. You're just relaxed. So even though people, like right now, I feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose. I am learning literally every day. Literally, I'm learning something new every day, even if it's just about my guides or about the other side or about how to deal with somebody in a situation um, or some compassion or some empathy that maybe I didn't Mm. have before. Continuously, all of the time learning. Thank you for sharing that because I was thinking, I'm like, well, I feel like I've incarnated in this human body because I want to learn and I want to learn as much as possible and I want to expand. And if I choose the, if I choose the highest path, if I choose the easiest path, then am I kind of just skating by on this well, we always, high path? We always think that learning is hard, right? Learning's oh, difficult. there it is. That's, that's <laughs> it's, it. it. That's not necessarily it. If you're doing something, yeah. so say you go to high school and you hated it, but you're somebody who's really passionate about art. So then you go to art school and you love it and it just totally suits you. You're still learning, but you're learning about something you actually want to learn about, not being forced to learn something. Mm -hmm. At times in our human lives, we are forced to learn stuff because we're not getting it yet, right? So the lessons are hard. They're hamster wheel-like or they're really devastating. But when you get to kind of the level that I'm at where I have figured out my purpose, my lessons are great and I want to learn them. It's like me specializing in university in something that I actually want to do, not taking all the entry level courses that you have to do, but they're kind of boring. You're not passionate about, you don't love it, but you'll force yourself through after you get those entry level courses out of the way, then you get to go and you get to specialize in what makes you feel fulfilled and passionate. So you're still learning just as much. You're just on a completely different level of learning. So learning and expanding can be fun and joyful yep. on your highest Positive. path, on your yep. highest purpose. It yep. doesn't have to be hard. Thank well, you. Well, and then, and then every once in a while, something will be thrown. You'll feel like you're just coasting along. Everything's so great. Something will be thrown in your way that throws you for a loop. And you're like, holy smokes, what the heck? And then you can kind of stumble a bit. But usually you get back on track pretty quick because it's like yeah. you've kind of figured it out a little bit. So even those I still have stumbling blocks. I definitely get overwhelmed sometimes. There's a lot of demands on my time and my energy. And I've had to set boundaries that maybe I didn't really want to set. You know, like I like responding to everybody personally. I know now I can't do that anymore. So even though I enjoy it, it's like I need to have a balance of time too. So I'm still definitely learning. And some of the lessons once in a while are hard, but most of the time they're just mm. awesome. Um. 
I feel like it would be really beneficial right now and feeling like asking you about um, free will. So I just think it'd be really great for the women in the group to hear about free will. And is there a cap? Are we limited in how far we can go in our life? Um, or And are we doomed to you know, a certain level of lifestyle in life, because that's what we chose before we came here. Um, how much of it is predetermined and how much of it is free will? I know you probably get asked this all the time, but <laughs> I think okay. it's something that the women in the group would love to, to hear. So free will does exist, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it does exist. But if you think of a human life, 80, say it's 80 years, and you think of eternity, which is infinite, 80 years is like a grain of sand in all the beaches of the world. So it's not that hard to plan out every choice a human could make in 80 years. So they show it to me. Remember in high school, we used to do like brainstorming with like a circle in the middle and here's your topic. And then you do like five off of that. And off those five, there's five more little spider legs off of those. And that goes infinitely. So like, say you were going to do, should I take this job? Yes or no? Or I'm going to think about it. So you choose yes. Off that yes, there's five options that could happen. So maybe you're going to love it. Maybe you're going to hate it. Maybe you're going to have a problem with interpersonal relationships. Maybe it's not going to suit you or maybe they're going to want to promote you right away. Off of every one of those five is another five. And that goes endlessly. I think we can't comprehend that because we're human and we're not meant to. We don't understand that time and space don't exist on the other side. But our higher self thought of every single choice we could possibly make and planned it into our life path. So it's like they explained it the other day that I really liked. It's like an infinite choose your own adventure book. Every choice cool. you make takes you to a different page, but it's all part of the same story. So it's still all part of our life and it is planned, but we have infinite choices to make, infinite directions we can go in every single situation. Every choice we make there's infinite possibilities that could wow. come from that choice. So it does exist, but it's also all planned out. So that's why we can never be off our path or off our purpose because all of it's planned. Wow. But it's still free will, at least how I think of it, right? As yeah. a human, if we have infinite possibility, that's free, that's free will. To yeah. me. But on the other side, yes, it's free will, but it's like, it's free will, but you've already thought. But there is some everything. kind of a map that you are yeah. following depending on the free will choices that you're yeah. making. Yeah, so you can cool. go any direction, but your higher self already thought of every direction. Wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. This is my very last question, and then we'll open it up. Um, okay. Intuition. Yep. How do we learn, tune into our intuition? Um, how can we tap into it? How can we develop it um, for purposes of making decisions? So, let's say decision-making. So let's say especially when something is a no, like, how do I know if I'm shying away from something if it's because it is a no, or because my ego or my fears have now just taken over my thinking? Um, is there do you have any sort of tips or yeah. advice on how to be more in tune with that? Yeah, so I think as humans, we automatically almost always go against our gut <laughs> because our gut always tells us the easy way to go. And our human self always says, Oh, that's too easy. I can't do that. I'm going to fail because too good to be true. Right. That saying shouldn't even exist. Like that mm -hmm. just shouldn't even be a thing that something's too good to be true. I think a good way is to just see how you feel about it. Uh, if there's fear there, usually your guides would want you to push through the fear. If there's an uneasy feeling, usually they're saying don't do it. So there's a difference mm -hmm. between fear and unease. Also, you can ask your guides. So a good tip is for talking to your guides. Obviously, I can just have a conversation with mine. They're there. I talk to them. They talk back. They answer all my questions. So it's easy for me. Although they don't answer them about me. They answer them about everybody else. <laughs> um, but you can sit. So go somewhere that's like your place. Everybody has somewhere that makes them feel really comfortable. And sit quietly. Take a few deep breaths. And you need to ask them yes or no questions. Any more than that, you're not going to understand because mm. obviously... Not everybody has my gifts. So you ask them yes or no. So say it is, um, should I, I keep using a job because it's just an easy one. Should yeah. I take this job? It has to be a yes or no question. Should I take this job? And kind of get in a quiet place. Should I take this job? The human way of answering it would be, ooh, if I take the job, like this could happen or that could happen and the pay, and the, oh my goodness, and what about this and the hours and the time? And But if I don't take it, it could be this or that. And you make lists, pros and cons, back and forth. When you're talking to your guides, 
and you ask them something, it is instantaneous yes or no. So you say, should I take this job? Yes, that's it. It's usually in your own voice at first because you don't understand their voice, but the answer is instantaneous. It doesn't mean you have to go that way. It doesn't mean that that way is the easiest or is going to make you the most happy. It's going to teach you the most. So they'll answer you and they'll tell you which direction you should go in. You don't have to listen, but it really is instantaneous. None of the human pro con list back and forth stuff. But I think just in general, we ask ourselves, should I do this because it will be best for me? We don't say, should I do this because it will bring me joy? I think that question needs to be added into a lot of the things that we ask because we don't. We go, oh, is this going to you know, be good for me? Is it going to be good for my family? Is it going to be good for all the people around me? Are people going to still like me? Is it going to be good for my, you know, my financial life, my time uh, balance life, all of this? I think we can tune almost all of that out and say, is it going to bring me joy? Is it going to fulfill me and make me happy? Because we don't ask that. We get really stuck in our society that goes, no, it doesn't matter as you're, if you're happy as long as you are successful and people like you, you know, all of those things. No, what matters is do I feel joyful and grateful for my life every day? If you don't feel joyful and grateful, probably you need to change something. Wow. And what's a no, Amber? What, what does it feel like if it's a no? They are pretty usually right on. Absolutely okay. not. A yes, I usually feel in my chest and no, I feel in my stomach. So a yes, chest is spirit. Chest is them when they're around spirit. No is your stomach doesn't feel good. <laughs> my young guide is like, <laughs> and if you all of a sudden, like you're feeling really good and you're meditating and you're asking these questions, and you yawn really loud, a lot of that time, that's them giving you a hug because they think it's funny. So <laughs> if you yawn, that's a yes too. No. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah, so, but yes, as I feel in my chest, nose is like an unease or like a, you know, like that not good butterflies in your stomach when you're like, if you're anticipating going to the dentist, that kind of feeling. Yes is like the so, butterflies you get when you're excited. So fear... When you talk about a no and there's a difference between fear, but your guides will generally want you to push through the fear and, yeah. and move on to whatever it is, or there's uneasiness, is is the fear would it would that also kind of feel like butterflies up here where an uneasy it would be in the and it depends if they're forcing you into something that is gonna cause you more fear. Oh okay. um, it totally depends. But yes is just <laughs> they're like you don't need us because people know what they should do. They just don't listen to themselves. Oh, so yeah. focus on that. If you, if you still are unsure after you ask the yes, no question, and you're just going like, I just, I still don't know. Like, I don't feel like that's the right answer. Ask if it's going to make you happy. Is it okay. going to bring you joy? Is it going to make you uncomfortable? Are you going to be able to lay down at night and be grateful for your life? Or are you going to lay down at night and be even more stressed than you are right now? That's a good indicator. Is too. it going to bring me joy? Yeah, I think we need to focus on that a little more in our lives. Could you imagine? That's why I like Christmas so much, because most of the time people are very joyful. And the people that aren't, I feel like I can bring them a little joy because mm -hmm. I try and do something nice for them. You know, like it just brings out happiness in people. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, not always, some people are very gr grinchy, but, you know, I really just like the, the energy around that yeah. time and the joy it brings people. Same with a sunny day. You go out on a sunny day. And I just love feeling people's energy. Whereas if you go out on a rainy day, people are grumpy. And I get to feel, I'm a mirror to everybody's oh, emotions. Yeah. So I get to feel all of that. <laughs> but I can definitely look at somebody and know 100% if they are where they're supposed to be. Or cool. if they need to, to tweak something or change something or shift their perspective. Wow. Um, and everybody can know that about themselves. Maybe not on the level that I know. But everyone knows that about themselves. They just listen too much to other people yeah. telling them what they should do or shouldn't do or how they should do whatever it is that they're going to do. Right. So I would love to um, invite people to ask questions. I haven't been watching because I've been so tuned in with you. I have a lot of people. Um, well, I don't think I can see questions. the questions. Okay. So I think um, only you can. Maybe up here. What's this? If you join oh. us in the, I, I can read them out and I can oh, post I can them up. On I think here, if you go on the right? Facebook group, you can see them. Yeah. Can you so see I them? Did, I did invite a few people. 
but there's like 1700 people on my page. So I couldn't invite all of them, but I did invite as many as I possibly could. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I'll, uh, I'll bring them in. Um, while we're, you know, inviting people to ask questions, you know, some of the people have already watched your lives and they know how it works. Some haven't. So would you yeah. like to set some kind of parameters as to how this usually works when people are asking questions on a live? Um, yeah. I think today maybe we'll, instead of me talking to dead people, let's focus on people's guides and kind of purpose and that kind of, like the things we've yeah. been talking about today. Um, I do lots of lives on my Facebook page where I'm good doing all of that. But I think here, let's focus on kind of what we're talking about today. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll just, yeah, I'm just going to finish adding. Oh, there's a lot of people that want to join us here today. That's really cool. Yeah. It's because I was, um, I was <laughs> adding people here. Maybe I'll take a couple seconds to see since we're doing the Q&A part, add a few more. Oh, I actually okay. sent requests to quite a few people. As you were talking in the beginning, I was pressing send to a lot of people. Oh, that's funny. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, so, if any, so everyone watching, we're going to stick to asking questions that we can communicate with your guides um, related to your purpose and your path, as that's the theme for today. But you can follow Amber. Her page is the West Coast Medium. She does lives. Um, I think you're doing them at least weekly, aren't you, Amber? Yeah, I try and do one a week. Sometimes I don't quite. It depends on my life. Yeah. I don't set out a time for them. I just do them when I have spare time. Cool. So you can follow Amber at the West Coast Medium on Facebook. A little trick, a little secret is make sure you go out of your way to turn on the notifications for Amber's yeah. page because then you will actually be notified when she's about to do a live. Often I've noticed that she will announce a couple hours before she's thinking yeah. about doing a live. And also we're going to talk about her live event. And when she has tickets, that's usually the first place she talks about um, having yeah. tickets for sale. So if you're interested in Amber and maybe doing it, being on another live with her or keeping up with her schedule and, and live events, um, make sure you follow West coast medium and make sure you go and turn on the notifications. I'm just learning how to do all of that. Actually, you taught me most of that. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I'm still just inviting. I don't think I'll get through. I don't think I could ever invite 1,700 people, but yeah. I'm slowly inviting some of the people on my okay on my, cool. on my page because I don't know how else to do it. I wish there was like an invite all button. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, there's a few things with Facebook. I wish they would switch up a little bit, but yeah. Okay, so if you go into the Savvy Soul Sister Facebook group, are you able to see? I think um, so. Because I, I, I seem to it's... remember that. Yeah, you know, I can you... see them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to make sure you can see them all because I'm not sure that they're all showing up. Let me just. Are you seeing uh, more than, I'm only seeing like the top four or five showing. Are you seeing like more see than that? Uh... <laughs> I'm so tech savvy. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh... Okay, so it says 47 comments. So yes, I think I can you see You can all. see them all? Okay, oh, cool. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Nope. Dang it. No, I can't see them all. Oh, this okay. is very different than um, So you, I how many can you see? You can just see a few at a time. Yeah, is that what's a, happening? Few, a few of them, yeah. Okay, so I'll skim through them and... Um, is that okay? And then you can yeah. let me know if yeah, you've got so you an answer just, or not. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Cool. Okay, so uh, Megan Weir says, hi, Amber. Odessa says, hi, hi, ladies. Lots of people saying hi. Hi from Saskatchewan. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, thank you for all the hellos. Uh, oh, Carly Allen, wasn't able to use my work computer to view your video using my data. Hashtag <laughs> worth it. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. Diane Kennedy is, is asking people to share. That's so nice. Okay, Heidi says that you live in in her old house. Do you know oh. Heidi? Oh, I think I do. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, Kathy says she can really relate to what we're talking about, feeling depleted and done with this nine to five. All right, so I will keep scrolling. Okay, Natasha, here. Can you see that, Amber? Hey, look at that! How'd you do that? Oh, I just click the little show button. Look at yeah. us tech pros over here. <laughs> I can't see all of it, but you might have to read it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So it says, um, Natasha says, what if you feel like you know your purpose, but you have no idea how to achieve it? Like, I feel like my purpose here is to help others, but I don't know how I'm supposed to help them. So I think, especially with that one, right? The reason I went into social working is because I felt like I was supposed to help others. Well, that's sure I was good at it, but that was not how I was supposed to help them. But my soul was just going, you've got to find a way to achieve what you're supposed to achieve because this was my purpose. I think that's a very general focus. And probably if you sat down with yourself and you actually made a list of what it means to you to help others, because everybody's idea of that is very different Um, you probably would get a bit more of a uh, focused answer than just, oh, I want to help others. Well, don't we all want to help others, right? Like that's a, I think as humans, we're innately born to want to help others unless we're not nice people. Most of the time we're born to want to help others. But actually sitting down and going, okay, well, what does that mean to me? And what does that look like in my personal life? What does that look like in my professional life? What does that look like in my family life? And write a list. And I bet you if you put all those things together, it would lead to a career for mm-hmm. you or a different purpose for you. Um, I think a lot of us kind of float through life hoping something's going to hit us on the head and go, this is what you're supposed to do. That's usually not how it works. It's usually very subtle because you don't learn anything if it hits you on the head. Um, you know, it, it took me a long, long time to accept what my purpose was. I knew I could do this. I had no interest in it. So I was like, well, I'll just do a whole bunch of other things and hope that it fulfills me in the way this will fulfill me. But I think literally maybe a little journaling and writing down what that means to you because everybody's idea of that is very different. Cool. Okay. Um, Oh, lots of people relating to what we were, we're talking about many aha moments. Oh, that's nice. Um, Okay. So Leah writes, my goal is to increase my intuitive abilities to the highest extent. Any suggestions for all of us that attain, that want to attain even a fraction of your psychic abilities? Um, sorry, I just need an answer. So just give me one sec. Um, I think, no, I don't like, that's a lot of exploding. So I think that um, in, so we live tons of lives and each of us in one life or another will be somewhat like me at some point, maybe in a different way, but somewhat like me. So yes, you can learn to some extent to embrace more intuition, more empathic abilities. In order to be me though, you have to be born like this. And you know if you're born like this or not. Once in a while, you'll be a little completely oblivious, but I was never oblivious to it. I just think each of us listening to our gut more, listening to what it's telling us and where it's telling us to go, because everyone has that ability. Everyone has the ability to connect with their guides and understand what they're wanting them to do or what they're trying to say to them. We just completely ignore it. We go, I'm the human. I know myself. Nobody else knows me as well as I know me and I'm going to do what I want. Mm most definitely you can do that if you want and you'll end up in probably a good place an okay place you'll be very determined and achieve things but you might not be as joyful and as happy and as grateful for your life as somebody who goes okay like I am human but I know that there is a purpose above that something I'm supposed to be achieving and giving to the world Um, I think asking yourself those questions and listening to your gut when needed I think practicing gratitude all of the time even when times are really hard helps us to connect a little bit with our gut because it shows our guides that we're grateful even when they're throwing harder lessons at us. So then they're a little more willing to be involved in our day-to-day life. But as far as, you know, being born, (laughs) what did somebody call themselves? A normie and I'm an abnormie or an extraordinormie. Being born a normie, if you're born without wanting to have a consciousness of the other side or how that works, there's not a ton you can do to change that, mm-hmm. uh, but you can definitely develop your intuition, your cool. empathic abilities, all of those things, your ability even to connect with your loved ones and feel them around, all of that you can develop. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just, I want to be conscious of the time. Um, are you okay to go? I don't know what time we actually started. Are you I okay? I think we were a minutes? bit late. Yeah, yeah, we can go okay. for a bit longer. Cool. I'm not tired at all yet. Spirit okay. lets me know when I should stop. They usually okay. go, nope, we're not answering yeah. anymore. <laughs> Just let me know. Um, cool. Perfect. I 
don't know if this is one we already, um, I'm going to bring it up anyways. Um, but maybe we did already touch on this. Heidi, how do we decipher between intuition and anxious self? <laughs> um, anxious self to me doesn't feel at all like intuition. They feel totally, totally different. Intu intuition feels comfortable. Mm. Anxious self or anxiety feels very uncomfortable. Um, and if you're getting an anxious feeling, how does that make sense, though? If fear sometimes is good. Um, I think overcoming fear sometimes will push us in the right direction. Um, making a choice based on anxiety is not going to push you in the right direction. I don't know how they're, why they're differentiating those two. That doesn't totally make sense to me, but I think it's going to make sense to her. Okay. Um, but making a decision that is like, I'm scared to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's really good. Making a decision and going, Oh, I feel really anxious and uneasy about this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Probably not so good for, Got it. for the balance in your life. Okay. Yeah. So Kate Russ says, oh, post it here. I've had an internal shift in the past few weeks that felt divinely orchestrated and have felt a pivot in the direction I am going with my business. Does fear have any guidance? Well, I don't, Kate, I don't think you really need guidance. I think you're doing what you're supposed to do. And you know that because you feel more at peace and more comfortable with yourself. Um, I think just continuing to challenge yourself is a good idea because you're somebody who uh, always needs to feel, and I think this will dissipate as you get more happy and content, but you always need to feel like you're accomplishing something. So for the next few months, just, you know, continuously check in with yourself. If you still feel like you're moving forward in a positive way, you're not so good with the standing still. You like a forward pace, which is okay. I think at some point you'll get tired and maybe not want to so much, but right now I think that's okay for you. But I think right now you're exactly where you're supposed to be and you know that. So just keep going with that. Awesome. Okay. Um, Lisa, I'm a social worker now, but do you see me switching my career to work with rescue animals? Um, I wish I could say yes right now, but I think not for a long while. I think you might do it on the side as kind of a part-time thing just to fulfill yourself. Uh, but I think you really do. You're somebody who takes a real purpose from being a social worker. It does fulfill you, even though it also stresses you out to the max. Um, but I could see you maybe doing it on, as a part time thing. Definitely at some point in your life, you will do it more. But I think right now um, you are fulfilled in what you're doing at the moment, cool. even amongst all the stress. <laughs> this question I really love um, by Charlene. How might my guides show or tell me that they agree with where I'm headed or making decisions? I think, um, I think that's very individual to each person, but I think for you, well, individual in general a little bit. I think for you, um, you'll feel more calm and content with yourself. You've been a little, um, what's the word? They say like stormy, you know, feeling conflicted mm -hmm. as of late and now you're starting to get some ideas that are pushing you forward and you're not quite feeling as conflicted or as out of, it's kind of like an out of body experience when you feel like you're not quite doing what you're supposed to do or you're uncomfortable. So I think if you feel comfortable and you feel content just across the board, I think that's a really good answer. If you feel good about it outside of what you think other people feel about it, because feeling uncomfortable about what other people think is much different than not feeling content within yourself. There's going to be a fear of what other people think all of the time, mostly, you'll learn to conquer it at times, sometimes it'll bug you. So don't base it on that of how you feel about what other people are thinking about what you're doing, but it's how you feel about yourself. Because that other discomfort will come and go. But if you are feeling within yourself, oh, hey, you know what, like, I'm finally feeling like I'm on track. Yes, I'm a little nervous and anxious, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. You're probably in a really good space. Cool. Thank you. Um, I have some options as this is Odessa. I have some options as far as business career. I'm not exactly sure which one is best suited for me. <laughs> I don't think your guides are sure yet either. <laughs> and I think that's why you're not sure because I think, um, that's not true. They know what you should do. You're not comfortable doing it yet. Uh, so just, yeah. Keep working on where you want to go right now. You're letting 
obligation and other people's needs of you play a huge role, it does need to play somewhat of a role, but it needs to take a bit of a back seat because you are going to be much more content and happy when you're doing what you want to do as opposed to what you're ob- as opposed to what you're obligated to do. So yes, your guides know, but that would be cheating on a test if I said, oh, this is the one you should take right here. Um, right now, you're definitely letting outside influences in a little bit too much, which is a, a natural human way, right? We have obligations, we have people that need us, and we have bills that need to be paid. Um, and it's a very scary thing to go, oh, maybe, you know, I want to do what makes me happy, and I might struggle at those things for a while. Um, but yeah, you need to pay attention to you a little more. Cool. Uh, Megan writes, thank you so much. This is my jam. <laughs> what do my guides want me to know in relation to my coaching business? <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, this is a public forum. Do I really say it? But you know what? If people will publicly ask questions, I will publicly answer them. Uh, I think they say that you're totally on the right track, but you are still, even now when you are feeling so much more content within yourself, uh, very, very hard on yourself. So you are somebody who will set a goal. And if you don't reach that goal 100%, you're going to be really hard on yourself. You still carry a lot of self-doubt with you and a lot of, maybe this isn't good if you run a coaching business and hopefully none of your clients are watching because I think you are really good at what you do. But as far as your own personal life in relation to what you do, sometimes you're giving more than you're getting. So you need to make sure you're still fulfilling yourself. You're dealing with that self-doubt when it comes up because Every once in a while right now, about once a month, that's getting out of balance where you're doing a lot more for others than you're giving to yourself. And I think you realize it because you get irritable, you get snappy, maybe a little more naggy than you normally are because I don't think you're a real naggy person. When you feel yourself getting like that, you need to take a step back and go, okay, I'm not giving enough time to myself and I'm focusing too much on others. And so then you've got to get that back in balance. But as far as your coaching business, I think you're doing really well at that. They think that this is what you're meant to do. And I think you know that you just need to continuously check in on that balance. Awesome. Okay. Brittany says, um, Oh, this, I'm not surprised. This is a common question. Um, uh, What do my guides want me to know about my coaching business moving forward? Um, What? (laughs) This is a weird little thing to show me, but they're like showing me like forks in the road. They're showing me you have too many. So I think you need to, I don't know what, you probably have a word for that, Jen. Like when you, like more folk, like a, um, not having so many different focuses, getting it a little more streamlined and tailored, kind of, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, specialized, There we focused. go. Yeah, like yeah. a little more, like you can't need to do everything for everyone. And I think that's kind of what you're trying to do right now. And it's very okay to say, no, you know what? This is the area I'm passionate about. And that's where I'm going to focus. Because there are tons of people out there that focus on all different areas and will fill a gap if you create a gap. But I think right now you're kind of being pulled in too many different directions. You need to tone that down a little and have more of a like concrete focus of where you want to go. Cool. Kathy writes, I'm struggling with knowing which direction to go in. Am I heading in the right direction? (laughs) You guys are kind of funny. They're like, well, I think you're standing still a little bit. So I don't know if you're heading in the right direction. I think um, you're a bit um, like within yourself, you feel a bit paralyzed with things right now. So I think being more patient and accepting of yourself and going, okay, like it's okay if I'm struggling with something or if I'm kind of standing still a little bit and that will help you to start moving forward again. So whatever it is that you decided to do and had passion about, you've kind of gone, (laughs) And just sort of frozen up. So you need to just let that go so that you can continue to move forward. Ooh, I love it. (laughs) So Jilly writes, do we have more than one spirit guide? Do they always agree with each other? Are there exercises I can do to feel their guidance more? I don't feel much when I'm meditating or asking for guidance. Uh, So we have, I'm actually learning a lot about guides in the last couple of weeks. Prior to the, a couple of weeks ago, I thought, oh, we have our permanent guides. They're with us our whole life. We have temporary guides that will come in once in a while because that's what I needed. I needed to feel like I wasn't alone in this and that they were always there, the same ones. Um, I now know that it's very fluid. So, yes, you do have your permanent guides that are with you 
through a lot of your lives and very focused on you, but you have infinite numbers of guides that will come in and help with different areas in your life. Um, I mainly talk to my dominant guide and everybody else has to speak through her. So no, not that I know they don't disagree. Everything's telepathic. So they would never confuse me with disagreeing. If they did disagree on something or had to have a conversation about it, they would do it. So I couldn't hear them. Um, exercises you can do is just literally talking to them like you would to a person, um, including them in your everyday life and in your decisions. They love that. They don't want you to give everything to them. You know, you do have to still make decisions on your own, but going, you know, like I, I could use you guys, like give me a nudge to help me feel what direction I should go in. Definitely. You can do that. Um, when I say meditation, I don't meditate. Like I don't sit and go home and totally silent and my mind goes blank. I cannot do that. So I sit and I talk to my guides and that's what I call meditation. I ask them to come forward. I ask anybody's loved ones who I need to talk to to come forward. To me, that's meditation. Meditation means anything that brings you peace and joy. Meditation can be going for a walk on the beach in the forest. It can be sitting outside for a picnic. It can be, for me, it used to be cleaning my house. That was like my Zen zone when I could turn my mind off and I loved it. I now have a housekeeper because I can't keep up with it. So I've had to find other ways to meditate. But I think we have this weird idea or construct of what meditation means when really it just means anything that brings joy to your soul and peace and calm to you. All of those things. It doesn't have to be minds quiet, sitting quietly, music on or those singing bowl things. And you just sit there and you go, oh, that's not just it. It's so many different things. Cool. Are you okay for one more? Sure. Okay. Tanya writes, what is the most important thing the guides want me to know right now? <laughs> My guide goes, good job. So I don't know what it is you're doing right now, but they just are kind of your cheering squad. They want you to know that you're not missing something because right now you feel like you're missing, missing the boat and you're missing something huge. And um, it actually can cause you, you know, everybody has a wave of emotion up and down. It actually can cause you to get a little bit stuck in the down and feel like you can't pull yourself out. So they just want you to know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So good cool. job. <laughs> so we have, you know, a bunch more questions here and I know we won't have time to get to them. Um, I'm just having a quick look if there's an underlying theme. Um, I don't know if Trisha Gray is still watching, but I don't know what it means. It's okay to use my shower now. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I, I wonder if she can clarify that. Um, okay. The general theme seems to be uncertainty about the future and wanting to know if, if you know, I'm on the right path. So um, if you're new yeah. to me and you're new to, you know, live videos with me, um, I have, I don't even know, a dozen on my personal page. And I talk about that a ton. I also have... Uh, I started doing videos in January and I started them on YouTube. So I've learned a lot since then. So some of my answers might be slightly different because I'm still always learning and growing. Uh, but it really, those ones, because it's not a Q and a, they deal with like some of the root issues. Why are we here? What is the purpose? What are we supposed mm -hmm. to do? How do we interact with the other side? How, you know, all of like the basic, basic other side questions all are on those like seven or eight videos that I did. Uh, so definitely, if you want a more in-depth idea of life purpose and path and all of that stuff, watch a bunch of those. A few of my Q&As on, on my West Coast Medium Facebook page are more like Q&As. I'm talking to dead people and stuff like that. Some of them are topics where I actually really get into certain topics. I think last week or the week before, I did an entire video just on soul's purpose and path. So you can wow. definitely go there. And what's um, the name of your YouTube channel? Is it just your? It's is the it same under... West Coast Medium? West Coast uh, Medium is, on YouTube. Yeah, there's another West Coast Medium in California. She looks nothing like me, so you should be able to differentiate. Uh, but she has a few videos as well. But yeah, it's just West Coast Medium. So you can go there cool. or to my Facebook page, and I answer so, that a lot. There's a few things. So for anyone, whether you're familiar with Amber or not. Um, Amber and I have had a few conversations now that have lasted like three hours long each. <laughs> and we had to cut it off. Like we could have oh, kept yeah. talking. And the things that Amber has, has taught me and shared with me, 
um, are things that I've always wondered about. Like my whole life, I've tried to learn about these different things in books. Some things have resonated with me, like these bigger life questions that, you know, she was talking about that she addresses in her YouTube videos. And I've watched um, Amber's videos and they're, they're super fascinating. So I really do urge you, if, if any of this um, resonates with you or, or it piques your curiosity, check out her YouTube channel, West Coast Medium. Definitely, no matter what, go to her business page, West Coast Medium on Facebook. And again, make sure you check that you want the notifications because she does these Facebook Lives. If we weren't able to get to your question today, we thank you for your patience. And <laughs> we definitely it invite all you to go to the Facebook page because she does them almost weekly, if not weekly. And you yeah. can uh, be on one of the lives and ask your question there. Um, and I also wanted to talk about a live event that Amber has coming up because I've had the chance to go to a live event with Amber and I'm actually going to be at this next one as well. And it was just like one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. Just watching Amber in action, connecting with people's loved ones who have passed and them getting the closure and, and having that sense of connection. It really does, like Amber mentioned, bring that sense of peace. Um, it's a really beautiful, almost like, I want to say, miraculous thing to see and to witness and to be a part of. So that's going to be happening in Nanaimo on, on Vancouver Island on yeah. July 26th. And last I heard, there was only 25 tickets left. There might not even be 25. Anymore. Yeah, I've sold, I think the seating is about 140. And yeah, I think I maybe have 25, maybe not quite that many, because I think I did sell a couple more this morning. I saw or, or heard earlier, people are listening from Saskatchewan. I also am doing a live show there in cool. Kindersley um on august 9th so there's awesome. definitely still tickets available for that if you are in saskatchewan uh the one here is at the nanaimo golf club so um and so how do people venue. reach out for you how, how do people reach out for tickets amber so they just have to message me they can email me or message me on facebook i tend to prefer facebook emails for i don't know why but i just tend to prefer facebook messages all i need is your name a contact number and payment via e-transfer and then there's a list at the door that your name will be on that will be ticked off I have yet to figure out online booking. I'm not rich enough for it yet. It's very expensive. So <laughs> I'll keep doing this. And then I may, if these next couple go well, start like some people want me to go to Victoria. Others want me to go to Courtney. So as it works out and, you know, I have a lot of family obligation too. After I tell everybody not to worry about their obligations, I do have family obligations. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll try and fit in a couple more shows because right now I am for readings. I'm fully booked until the middle of October which is as far in advance as I will book. I can't book any further in advance. So, um, and when I do post, like I had 40 spots available for September and October, I posted them on my page and they were gone in 90 minutes. And I had yeah. twice the amount of requests for readings that I had available. That's why you turn on your notifications on yeah, Amber's so that, so page that you because you right don't want to miss these. And I post all cancellations there too. So if I have cancellations, 100%, that's where they're posted. I don't maintain a wait list. There's absolutely no way I could. So yeah, the only, really only way to keep, get a reading is to keep an eye on that Facebook page. Cool. Yeah. Amber, I am so grateful for you taking the time today to be here. I know you have a family and you have your own life and your own business. So I just really want to express my gratitude that you took the time out to be here to share with us everything that you share to answer the questions that you're able to answer. And hopefully my anyone pleasure. that we didn't get to will now be joining you on your page and, and can join yeah. you on your next Facebook Live. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. It was fun. And now I know how to do this. Yay. So that's kind of cool. Win-win. Yeah. I know. Cool. Well, we'll, right. well, we'll chat soon. We'll chat all of you later. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Thanks, Amber. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.